Hey everyone, welcome back to a whole new session from Edureka. My name is Vajiha and in this session, you'll be preparing for the 50 most important Excel interview questions and answers. So this session will be divided into three different sections that is general questions, questions related to pivot tables and then questions dealing with formulas and functions in Excel. So now moving on towards the first question that is explain MS Excel in brief. Microsoft Excel as we all know is a spreadsheet or a computer application that allows the storage of data in the form of table. Excel was developed by Microsoft and can be used on various operating systems such as Windows, Mac OS, iOS, Android, etc. Some of the important features of MS Excel are the availability of graphing tools, built-in functions such as sum, date, countif, etc. Excel allows data analysis through tables, charts, filters, etc. It also provides the visual basic for application, flexible workbooks and worksheet operations and also allows data validation. So these were a few features of MS Excel. So now let's move on towards the next question that is what do you mean by cells in MS Excel? So as you can see on the screen, the area that falls as an intersection of the columns and the rows is known as a cell. The total number of rows that are available in Excel are 10,48,576 and the total number of columns are 16384. So the total number of cells will be 10,48,576 cross 16384. So I hope you guys are clear with this. So now let's move on towards the next question, which is explain what is a spreadsheet. Spreadsheets are basically collections of cell that help you manage the data. A single workbook may have more than one worksheet. So as you can see over here at the bottom of the workbook, you can see all the sheets that are available in this workbook. So by default, they are named as sheet one, sheet two, etc. In case you want to change the name of any of these sheets, just double click on them and give any name of your choice. I'll just say example. So now let's move on towards the next question. What exactly is cell address? So the address of a cell refers to the address that is obtained by combination of the row number and the column letter. So each cell of an MS Excel sheet will have a unique address. So I hope you guys are clear with this. So now moving on towards the next question of the session, which is can you add new cells to an Excel sheet? The answer is yes, you can insert new cells into a sheet. To add a new cell, what you have to do is simply select the cell wherein you want to insert a new cell and then right click on it. Go to the insert option and then select the place where you want to insert a new cell. So in case you want to shift all these cells towards the right and then insert a cell before this, you have to select the first option. In case you want to insert a cell above some lines, all you have to do is choose the second option. So right now I'm not going to insert any cells. So I'll just cancel this. So now moving on towards the next question, which is can you format MS Excel cells? If yes, then how? So the answer is yes, MS Excel cells can be formatted. In order to format these cells, you can use the commands present in the font group of the home tab. So what I'm going to do is just open this over here. So as you can see, the number group allows you to format cells to be of any type such as currency, accounting, date, percentage, etc. Alignment allows text control, alignment and setting of the direction of the text that's present in the cell. Font enables various fonts, styles, sizes, colors, etc. Border allows cell borders to be changed removed, colored and so on. You can also fill the cells with any desired colors. And finally, you can also protect your cells from locking and hiding them. So I hope you guys are clear with this. So now let's move on towards the next question, which is can you add comments to a cell? Yes, comments can be added. To add comments to a cell, all you have to do is right click on that cell and choose the new comment option. As you can see over here, a dialog box will open wherein you can type any comment of your choice. So I'll just write down comment over here. Okay, so as you can see, I've added a comment to the cell. Now just to notify that there is a comment present in this cell, there's a purple symbol present in the top right corner of this cell. So in case you do not want this comment anymore, just click on the three dots that are present in the dialog box and then delete the thread. So one more important thing that you guys have to note is that these comments will be visible to all those people who have access to this Excel sheet. Not just that they can also answer to your comments. So now moving on towards the next question, which is can you add new rows and columns to an Excel sheet? Yes, you can add new rows and columns to an Excel sheet. What I'm going to do over here is select this column, right click over it and then select the insert option. 
So as you can see the cells have just shifted towards the right now for a more clear picture. Let me just type in something over here. I'll say example and then I'll select this column right click on it. I'll say insert. So as you can see a new column has been inserted before this column. Similarly, you can also insert a row. So I'll just write an example over here. I'll select this row. Go to the insert option. So as you can see a new row has been inserted. Okay, so I hope you guys are clear with this. So now let's move on towards the next question, which is what is ribbon and where does it appear? The ribbon is basically your key interface with Excel and it appears at the top of the Excel window. So as you all can see on the screen, this is nothing but the ribbon tab. It consists of file home insert page layout formulas, etc. The ribbon tab basically allows users to access many of the important commands directly. So in case you want to access any of these commands, all you have to do is just click on them. Not just this Excel also allows you to customize the ribbon. Now in order to customize the ribbon tab, all you have to do is right click anywhere on this. And then choose the customize the ribbon option. So as you can see on the screen, you can choose any option of your choice to be added to the ribbon tab. So let me just choose another option over here. I'll say I want to include the developer tab and I'll click on OK. So as you can see over here, a new tab has been added to this ribbon. Similarly, you can select or unselect any option of your choice to be present in the ribbon tab. So now moving on, how do you freeze panes in Excel? MS Excel allows you to freeze panes that will help you to see headings of rows and the columns even if you scroll a long way on the sheet. Now in order to freeze the cells, all you have to do is select the rows and the columns that you intend to freeze. Then go to the view tab and select the freeze panes option. Now over here you'll be able to see three options that is freeze panes, freeze top row and freeze first column. You can give any option of your choice. So what I'm going to do is just delete this and over here I'll just give some new titles. I'll say name and ID. So now what I'm going to do is freeze this. So I'll go to the view tab and select freeze panes option. I'll freeze the top row. So now even when I scroll down the stop row has been frozen and I'll be able to see it even if I scroll a long way down the sheet. So I hope you guys are clear with this. Okay, so now moving on towards the next question. How do you add a note to a cell? So in order to add a note all you have to do is select the cell right click on the same and then select the new note option. Now you can type in any note of your choice over here. So I'll just type in note and then I'll hit enter. So as you can see over here a new note has been added to my cell and it's indicated by a red triangle that is present in the top right corner of the cell. Also one more thing to note is that the name that is shown over here is the default user's name. Okay so now in case you want to delete this note all you have to do is right click on the same and choose the delete note option. So now moving on towards the next question which is can you protect workbooks in an Excel sheet? Yes workbooks can be protected. Excel provides three options for this. Passwords can be set to open workbooks. You can protect the sheets from being added, deleted, hidden or unhidden and protecting window sizes or positions from being changed. So up next is how do you apply a single format to all the sheets present in a workbook? Excel allows you to apply the same format to all the sheets of a workbook. So to do that all you have to do is right click on any of the sheet that is present in the workbook and then click on the select all sheets option. Now after doing this if I apply some format to any of the sheet present in this workbook that format is going to be applied to all the sheets that are present in this workbook. So as you can see I just have one workbook over here. Let me just add on a new workbook. And then I'll select all sheets and what I'm going to do over here is go to the home tab font. I'll just fill these cells with some color. So now let me move on towards the next sheet and see what happens. So as you can see over here I made some changes to this sheet and it's also been reflecting in the next sheet. So I hope you guys are clear with this. So now let's move on towards the next question which is what do you understand by relative cell addresses? Whenever you copy formulas in Excel the addresses of the reference cells get modified automatically in order to match the position where the formula has been copied. Now this is done by a system called as the relative cell addresses. So let me get back to Excel in order to show this to you guys. 
So what I'm going to do over here is type in some numbers. I'll say four and five here. I'll say six and seven eight and nine. So what I'm going to do over here is type in the formula in this cell and then I'm going to copy the same formula to these two cells. So what I'm going to do is type in an equal to sign and then I'll just give the cell addresses as a3 plus a4 and then I'll hit enter. So as you can see I've got the result for a3 and a4 over here. Now in case I want to copy the formula over here as well. What I'm going to do is simply select the cell and drag it down till the cell that I want to copy the formula to. So as you can see over here I have copied the formula and Excel by default has changed the cell reference according to the position. So what if you do not want to modify the cell addresses when you have copied the formula. So in case you want to copy the formula without modifying the cell addresses you'll have to make use of absolute cell addresses. When you use absolute cell references the row and the column addresses do not get modified and they remain the same. So basically when you have to use absolute referencing you'll have to make use of the dollar symbol before the column and the row numbers. So what I'm going to do over here is just change this formula or let me just take a new cell and then I'll add in all these cells. So what I have to do is insert a dollar symbol before each of these. And then I'll hit enter. So now what I'm going to do over here is copy this formula to the other cells and see what happens. So as you can see over here the same result has been copied to this cell which means the formula has not been modified. In case I would have used relative cell addresses then the formula would have been modified according to its position. So now let's move on towards the next question which is what will you do if you want to change either the column letter or the row number but not both. To do this you must make use of the mixed cell referencing. Here either the row number or the column letter will change but not both of them. So to show this example to you guys what I'm going to do is get back to my Excel sheet and over here. Okay, let me come towards this side. Let me select a new cell. Okay, what I'm going to do over here is type in an equal to sign and then I'll type in a dollar three. And then after that I'll type in a plus sign and then B dollar three. So now what I'm going to do is copy this formula and see what happens. So as you can see over here when I copy the formula the column remains the same and the value of the row number has not changed because I've given absolute referencing over here. So I hope you guys are clear with this. Okay so now let's move on towards next question which is can you protect the cells of a sheet from being copied. So the answer is yes you can do it by protecting the required cells or the complete sheet. Now to do this all you have to do is select the cells that you want to protect go to this font group over here and then select protection. From here check the hidden option and then click on OK. So as you can see there are no changes that are made to my sheet. The formulas that are present in this cell are still visible. Now in case I want to apply the changes that I just made all I have to do is go to this review tab and then select the protect sheet option. Excel will ask me to enter some password. So I'll just give some random password over here. And then I'll click on OK. So as you can see previously when I used to click on these cells it would show me the formula for both of these. Now when I click on either of these cells the formula is hidden. When I click on any of the other cells that I've not protected the formula is still visible. OK so I hope you guys are clear with this. Now in case you want to unprotect the sheet all you have to do is select this unprotect sheet option and then enter the password that you had specified. So now moving on towards the next question which is how do you create named ranges. So in order to add named ranges all you have to do is select the area which you intend to give a name. And then from the ribbon tab click on formulas. From here go to the define name command and give any name of your choice. So I'll just give vegetables as the name of this table. Or I'll just say veggies. And then I'll click on OK. So as you can see over here, 
the name given to this range is veggies. Similarly, if you want to create a name for this range as well, all you have to do is select that, go to the formulas tab, and select on define name. Then give any name of your choice, and over here I'll just say fruits. And then I'll click on OK. So as you can see, I have created two ranges that is vegetables and fruits. So now moving on towards the next question, which is what do you mean by macros? Excel allows you to automate the tasks that you do regularly by recording them into macros. So a macro is basically an action or a set of them that you can perform n number of times. So for example, if you have a record of sales of each item and at the end of the day, you have to calculate the sales profits loss, etc. So if you create a macro, it will automatically calculate all these values and then you can use the same for future purposes. So now moving on towards the next question, which is how do you create drop down lists in Excel? So now in case you want to create a drop down list, all you have to do is select on the data tab that is present in the ribbon and then from this data tools group over here, select the data validation command. Okay, from the given options, select list, provide the source. So I'll just provide the vegetable names as the source and then I'll click on OK. So as you can see over here, I have a drop down list which contains the name of all the three vegetables that I've specified over here. So I hope you guys are clear with this. So now let's move on towards the next section, which is pivot tables and pivot charts. So the first question of this session is explain pivot tables along with their features. Pivot tables are statistical tables that condense the data of those tables that have extensive information. The summary can be based on any field such as sales, averages, sums, etc that the pivot table represents in a simple and an intelligent manner. Some of the important features of pivot tables are they allow the display of exact data that you have to analyze. They provide various angles in order to view the data. They allow you to focus on important details. Comparison of data is very handy and pivot tables can detect different patterns, relationships, data trends, etc. They can also create instant data, accurate reports and serve as the base for pivot charts. So now let's move on towards the next question, which is how do you create pivot tables? In order to create a pivot table, you will first need to prepare the data in the tabular format. Now while preparing this data, you'll have to keep a few points in mind. The first thing is you'll have to arrange the data into rows and columns. The first row should contain unique heading for each of the columns and the columns should have only one type of data present in them. The rows must have a data for single recording and there should be no blank rows. Columns should not be completely empty and the data for creating pivot table should be separated from the other data that is present on that sheet. So what I'm going to do over here is copy a table that I've already created. So as you can see over here, the first row has a unique heading and each column has the same type of data. The following rows contain the data for a single recording. So I hope you guys are clear with this. So now let's move on and see how you actually create pivot tables. So what I'm going to do over here is select this table. And then I'll click on the insert tab. From here, I'll choose the pivot table option. I'll select the existing worksheet option. I'll give some random cell as the target place and then I'll click on OK. So as you can see over here, an empty pivot table has been created. Also, the pivot table fields pane has opened that contains all the fields that are present in my pivot table. Now to create a pivot table, all you have to do is drag and drop any of these fields present in this four areas over here. That is filters, columns, rows and the values. So what I'm going to do over here is drag and drop some fields into these four areas. I'll drop names into the rows. I'll drop the items into columns. Amount to values. And the filters will be based on the city. So as you can see over here, a pivot table has been created which contains all the names as rows and all the item names as the columns. Also, you can see all the amounts that are collected for each item by each of these vendors and also the grand total of each of them. So now moving on towards the next question, which is what are pivot charts? MS Excel charts are data visualization tools that help you visualize the data in various ways. These charts can be of any type such as bar, pie, area, line, donut, etc. So in case I want to create a pivot chart for this pivot table over here, what I have to do is go to the insert tab and then from the charts group, I'll select any chart of my choice. 
and then I'll click on OK. So as you can see a pivot chart has been created for this pivot table. You can also filter out the data according to your choice by selecting any of the data that you want to see selectively. Let me just select for Chicago and I'll click on OK. As you can see over here my pie chart has been modified accordingly. Not just this you can also format this chart by selecting this option and from here you can select any type of chart that you intend to see. So I hope you guys are clear with this. So now let's move on towards the next question which is can you create pivot tables using multiple tables? The answer is yes. You can create pivot tables using one or more base tables. Please note that both the tables should be present in the same worksheet. So now to show this to you guys what I'm going to do is insert a new sheet and over here. I'll just copy half of this data. So what I've done over here is separated the table that I've created previously into two different tables. So what I'm going to do over here is click all plus D and then I'll click on P. From this pivot table and pivot chart wizard I'll select multiple consolidation ranges option and then I'll click on next. Then I'll choose the option. I will create the page fields. And over here I'll specify the first range to be the order IDs date name and the item. I want one field. I'll just name it as field one. And I'll add this. So now for the next field what I'm going to do is select this. I'll add it and I'll give the name as field two. And then I'll click on next. So Excel will ask you where you want to create it and I'll say the existing sheet and I've selected some cell over here. Then I'll click on finish. So as you can see over here a new pivot table has been created by taking the information present in both these tables. So now let's move on towards the next question which is what happens when you check the differ layout update option present in the pivot table fields window. So in case you check this option you will not see dynamic changes while interchanging the table fields. So as you can see by default this option is off or unchecked. All the changes will appear only when you click on the update button when you check this box. So what I'm going to do over here is first show you guys what happens when I make changes without checking this box. So I'll just remove the rows and I'll put it back over here. So as you can see I've just removed the rows and put it back over here and my pivot table has changed accordingly. Now what I'm going to do is put it back. I'll check this box and then I'll do the same. So as you can see previously when I removed the rows and I put it back in this list over here the pivot table changed accordingly. Now only when I hit the update button it is going to change. So I hope you guys are clear with this. OK so now let's move on towards the next question which is can you create pivot tables using tables from different worksheets. Yes. If both the sheets are from the same workbook you can create pivot tables from the tables present in different sheets. To create pivot tables from two different sheets follow the same steps shown in question 24 and when you're adding the tables go to the respective sheet and select the tables that you intend to merge. So is it possible to see the details of the results displayed in a pivot table? Yes it is possible to see the details of the results shown by the pivot tables in Excel. In order to see the details of any of the results all you have to do is double click on any of them and you will see that Excel creates a new sheets with all the details about that result. So as you can see over here I double clicked on the grand total 400 obtained by Brad and you see that Excel created a new sheet giving me all the details regarding this. So now let's move on towards the next question which is how are pivot tables used to filter data. Excel pivot tables allow you to filter data according to your requirements. To do this all you have to do is place the field based on which you wish to filter the data and then from this pivot table filter the data according to your choice. So as you can see over here I've placed the city field in the filters area and over here I can filter out the data for all the cities or choose any city of my choice. OK so let me just choose New York and click on OK. So as you can see over here I have a pivot table created only for the New York City. So now moving on towards the next question which is how do you change the value field to show some other result other than the sum. In order to change the value field to show results other than the sum all you have to do is right click on any of these values present over here or from this pivot fields table click on this drop down list present over here. 
then select the value field settings option and from the given list choose any total of your choice let me just change from sum to count and then I'll click on okay so as you can see over here the sum of values has been changed to the count of amount so now moving on how do you stop automatic sorting in pivot tables so as many of us know excel automatically sorts the data present in pivot tables in case you do not want to do this open up the drop down lists present for the row labels or the column labels click on more sort options then go to more options and over here uncheck this box that says sort automatically every time a report is updated once you're done with that just click on okay so that was the last question present in this section so now moving on towards the third section that is question based on formulas and functions in excel so coming towards the first question under this section what do you understand by excel functions functions in excel are used to perform specific tasks excel has many built in functions that are used to calculate results of various formulas thereby helping in time conservation also these functions make it very easy to execute formulas which would have been difficult to manually write down so what are the various categories of functions available in excel so as you can see on the screen functions present in ms excel have been categorized in this list of options that are present over here so you have categories based on the date and time financial functions functions based on mathematics and trigonometry statistical functions lookup and reference functions database text logical information and engineering functions cube functions compatibility and web functions so now talking about a very important question which is what is the operator precedence of formulas in excel formulas in excel are executed according to the bodmas rules bodmas as many of us know stands for brackets order division multiplication addition and subtraction so that means in every formula brackets are executed first if any of them are present followed by multiplication division etc now to show an example of this let me get back to excel let me just give in some values over here i'll say 3 4 5 now in this cell i'll just type in some expression i'll say a1 star b1 plus c1 and now i'll hit enter so as you can see over here the result has been calculated by first adding b1 and c1 and then multiplying the same with a1 so basically 5 plus 4 will give me 9 and 3 times 9 is 27 now in case i modify this formula by just removing the brackets and now let's see what happens so as you can see previously i had a result saying 27 now the result is 17 so what excel has done over here is first multiplied a1 and b1 and then the result is added to c1 so basically 3 times 4 is 12 and 12 plus 5 is 17 so i hope you guys are clear with this so now let's move on towards the next question which is explain the sum and the sumif functions so now let me just open up the sum function over here in order to show you guys the syntax of this so as you can see over here the sum function takes an n number of values as its parameter and it returns a sum by adding each of them so now what i'm going to do is just cancel this and over here I'll type in an equal to sign, and I'll use sum function. I'll just specify this range to be all the values to be added using the sum function, and now I'll hit enter. So as you can see over here, the sum function has added all the values that are present between a1 and d1. Similar to the sum function is the sumif function. One difference is that this function is used to calculate the sum of values that comply to a given condition. Now, in case I just change this from sum to sumif. I'll have to specify the range followed by the criteria. Now what I'm going to do is given some criteria, I'll say calculate the sum of values that are less than 15. And then I'll hit enter. So as you can see over here, it has added only those values that are less than 15 and it has discarded 17. So now moving on towards the next question, which is what are the different types of count functions available in Excel? Excel provides five types of count functions, that is count, count a, count blank count if and count if s so talking about the first function that is the count function this function returns the total number of cells that have numbers in the range that is specified to it as a parameter so now to show you all how this works what i'm going to do is type in an equal to sign over here and then i'll make use of the count function 
So as you can see over here, it takes all the values as a parameter. So what I'm going to do is just specify this range and then I'll hit enter. So as you can see over here, the count function has returned five, which means five cells in this range contain numbers. So now moving on towards the next function, which is count A. If I just change this from count to count A, it is going to count all the cells that are not empty within this range. So as you can see over here, I had given a very big range that has cells that contain information plus the cells that are empty. But count A has returned only the number of cells that contain data in them. So now talking about count if. The count if function counts the number of cells that comply to a given condition. So let me just change it from count A to count if. And within this range, I'll just specify some criteria. I'll say count the values that are greater than 10. And then I'll hit enter. So as you can see within this range, there are two cells that contain values that are greater than 10. In contrast to count A is count blank. Count A counted the number of cells that contain information. On the other hand, count blank will count the number of cells that are blank within a given range. So what I'm going to do over here is change this from count if to count blank. And then I'll just remove this condition from here. Okay, so as you can see, there are seven empty cells present in this range. So now talking about count if s. This is a very special function that allows you to specify a set of conditions in order to count them. So what I'm going to do is go to the table that I've created over here. So what I'm going to do over here is type in an equal to sign. Then I'll choose the count if s formula. And then I'll have to specify the range for criteria one, the range for criteria two and so on. So what I'm going to do is just select the names. And the name that I want to select from here is Ivan. After this, I'll give criteria two range. And I'll specify the quantity as 24. Now I'll hit enter. So as you can see over here within the given range, there's just one cell that has Ivan and has the quantity of 24 present in it. So I hope you guys are clear with this. Okay, so now let's move on towards the next question, which is how do you calculate the percentage in Excel? Percentages as we all know are the ratios that are calculated as a fraction of 100. Mathematically, percentage will be equal to the part by whole multiplied by 100. In Excel, percentage can be calculated similarly. So now to calculate the percentage of marks obtained by each of these students, what I'm going to do is just select the cell where I want to calculate the percentage. I'll type in then equal to sign and then it is part by whole. So it will be B2 divided by C2. Then I'll hit enter. And once I've obtained the result, I'll click on home tab and from here I'll click on the percentage symbol. Similarly, I'll just copy this formula to the next cell. So as you can see, Ivan has scored 96% and Sergio has scored 78%. So now moving on towards the next question, which is explain how to calculate compound interest in Excel. To calculate compound interest in Excel, you can make use of the FV function. The FV function returns the future value of an investment based on periodic constant investment rates and payments. So let me get back to Excel. So as you can see over here, I've already created a table. The investment amount that I have over here is 500 at the rate of 10% for five years and the compounding periods are 12. So now to show the syntax of this function to you guys, what I'm going to do is just type in an equal to sign followed by FV. So as you can see over here, Excel provides a description saying this returns the future value of an investment based on periodic constant payments and constant interest rate. So now to find the rate, I'll divide the annual rate by periods and to find n per, I'll be multiplying the number of years with the periods. PMT over here can be any value including zero. First, I should type in the rate. To calculate the rate, like I've already told y'all, I have to divide annual rate by periods. So that will be B2 divided by B4. After this, I'll have to specify number of periods that will be obtained by multiplying B3 and B4. The periodic payments value I'll specify as zero and then I'll specify minus of B1 as the investment rate. Now this is because the money has been taken from my end. So as you can see over here, the future value for an investment of 500 at the rate of 10% for five years and the compounding periods being 12 is $822.65. So the future value for an investment of $500 at the rate of 10% for five years 
and 12 compounding periods is $822.65. So I hope you guys are clear with this. So now moving on towards the next question, which is how do you find averages in MS Excel? In order to find the averages, you can make use of the average function. So as you can see over here, this function returns the average or the arithmetic mean of its arguments, which can be numbers, names, arrays, or references that contain numbers. So now, in order to find the average obtained by each of these students over here, what I have to do is just select the range and then I'll click enter. So as you can see over here, the average of Dave is 83.4. Similarly, if I have to calculate for Ava, all I have to do is copy this formula. So I hope you guys are clear with this. So now let's move on towards the next very important question, which is what is VLOOKUP in Excel? The VLOOKUP is a function present in Excel used to look up and bring forth data from a given range. V stands for vertical and to use this function, data should be arranged vertically. VLOOKUP is very useful when you have to find some piece of data from a huge amount of data. So how does this VLOOKUP function work? The VLOOKUP function in Excel takes a lookup value and begins to look for the same in the leftmost column. When it finds the first occurrence of the given lookup value, VLOOKUP starts to move right, that is, in the row where the value was found. It goes on until the column specified by the user and returns a desired value. This function can be used to match exact as well as approximate lookup values. However, the default match is an approximate match. Now to show you all the syntax of this function, what I'm going to do is get back to Excel. So as you can see over here, I've already created a table. So now just to show you all the syntax of this function, what I'm going to do is type in an equal to sign. And then I'll choose the VLOOKUP function. So as you can see over here, the VLOOKUP function takes in four parameters, which is the lookup value, the table array, the column index number, and the optional parameter, which is range lookup. The lookup value gives the value to be looked for. Table index is the table wherein the data should be taken from. Column number specifies the column from which you want to fetch the value and the range lookup is a boolean value which is either true or false. True will find the closest match and false will find an exact match. So now explain exact match with an example. For an exact match, you'll have to set the range lookup value to false. So let me just take one example of this. The value that I want to look over here will be Leo. And then I'll specify the table array. I'll give the column number as four since I want to take down the salary of Leo and then I'll specify false as the Boolean value. So as you can see over here, I fetch the value of Leo's salary. So what VLOOKUP does over here is it will start to look for Leo in this leftmost column present in this table. So once it traces Leo, it will start moving right in this row and it will go on till that column which is specified as a parameter over here. So I hope you guys are clear with this. So now explain the approximate match with an example. For an approximate match, VLOOKUP will fetch values where there are no exact matches of the given lookup value. Now in order to make VLOOKUP search for an approximate match, you will have to set the Boolean value to true. Remember that the table must be sorted in ascending order for VLOOKUP to do an approximate match. So what VLOOKUP basically does over here is it starts to look for an approximate match of the given lookup value and then it stops at the value which is the next largest of the given lookup value. Then it starts to move right in the same row and fetches the value that is desired. So what I'm going to do is type in an equal to sign and then select the VLOOKUP function. I'll specify the lookup value to be 80 and the table array. The column I'll specify as 2 and the range lookup will be true. So as you can see over here, VLOOKUP has fetched B as the result for 80. So what VLOOKUP is doing over here is it starts looking for 80 in this leftmost column and then it stops at the next largest value and then moves right in the same row. So I hope you guys are clear with this. Okay, so now moving on towards the next question, which is can you use VLOOKUP for multiple tables? Yes, you can use VLOOKUP for multiple tables as well. In case you have two lookup values, Create name ranges for each of the table and then use the if function to select between each table based on some of the given condition. To know more about this, you can check out the VLOOKUP in Excel video from Edureka. So now moving on, how do you perform a horizontal lookup in Excel? To perform a horizontal lookup, you'll have to make use of the HLOOKUP function. 
the h lookup function just like the v lookup function takes a lookup value the table array and instead of the column index number it takes the row index number as a parameter and the range lookup value so now to perform an h lookup what i'm going to do over here is take a new cell i'll just type in h lookup and over here i'll specify that i want to see the designation and then i'll specify the range followed by the row index number and since i want a perfect match or an exact match i'll type in false i've just made a mistake in this range over here so as you can see over here i have the output as senior developer so just like the vlookup function the h lookup function will first do a horizontal search and then it will move downwards so i hope you guys are clear with this okay so now let's move on towards the next question which is how will you fetch the current date in excel to fetch the current date you can make use of the today function this function will return the current date in ms excel date format so let me just choose a new cell and over here i'll just type in today so as you can see over here it has returned the date in ms excel date format so moving on towards the next question which is how does the and function work the and function in excel is used to check whether a given condition or a set of conditions are true or not in case the conditions are satisfied this function will return a boolean true so as you can see over here i've already created a table now to make use of the and function what i'm going to do is type in an equal to sign and then i'll just type in and for condition 1 i'm going to check if 230 is greater than 200 and less than 500 so what i'm going to do over here is select the cell and i'll see if this is greater than 200 and less than 500 and now i'll hit enter so as you can see 230 is greater than 200 and less than 500 similarly if i have to calculate for the rest of the values i'll just copy the formula so i hope you guys are clear with this Okay so now moving on towards the next question which is what is the what if analysis what if analysis is the technique of performing changes to one or more formulas present in a cell in order to see how it affects the result of those formulas in the worksheet excel provides three types of what if analysis tools that is scenarios goal seek and data tables scenarios and data tables take a set of inputs to check for the potential results scenarios can work with many variables but input values can be at the max 32 data tables on the other hand work with just one or two variables but can accept many distinct values for each of those variables goal seek in contrast to scenarios and data tables takes the outputs and determines the possible inputs for the same so can you create shortcuts for most frequently used formulas yes you can do it by customizing the quick access toolbar right click anywhere on this quick access toolbar and then choose customize quick access toolbar option from here you can add any function of your choice to this quick access toolbar so what is the difference between formulas and functions in excel formulas are defined by the user that is used to calculate some results formulas can either be simple or complex and they can consist of values functions defined names etc a function on the other hand is a built in piece of code that is used to perform some particular action Excel provides a huge number of built-in functions such as the sum function, product, if, sum if, count, etc. So now moving on towards the last question of this session and that is how do you use wild cards with vlookup? Wild cards can be used when you're not sure of the exact lookup value. In order to use wild cards in Excel, you should make use of the star symbol. So for example, in this table over here, in case I do not know the complete name of Sergio, what I'm going to do is just type in ERG over here. and then i'll make use of the vlookup function the first thing that i'll be specifying over here is wildcard symbol that is star and then i'll type in an ampersand symbol and the reference will be f13 an ampersand symbol again and an asterisk after this i'll specify the table array the column index number as usual and then false for an exact match So as you can see over here I found the result for Sergio as junior software engineer. So I hope you guys are clear with this. This brings us to the end of this session. 
I hope you guys have enjoyed and learned something new. Goodbye and take care.